all so I can say three, two. It's June 30th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Uh, welcome to Cubs Out Live, the Bear Podcast of Determined Length, episode number 514. And I have a pride shirt that's being held hostage. What? So, critical role. Like, 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 like at the border, can't get like through customs. No, 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 no. no, (laughs) Like, doesn't have proper papers. No. So, I I ordered this T-shirt from Critical Role. It says, "Don't forget to love each other," and has these D twenty dice around it in different like pride ish sort of colors. Um, and I ordered one of those, and it arrived on Friday. While I was sleeping, when I woke up, the uh, office was closed. So it's currently being held hostage in my, the office. Yeah, so I'll be able to pick it up tomorrow. So I'll pay, pick it up the day after Pride Month is over. Gotcha. But that's okay. It's all good. It's fine. In any case, uh, today... Uh, normally we do like a full-fledged like what's going on thing where we talk about what's been going on and uh, some feedback but today we are going directly into so Gary what's this feedback we got so back uh I'll, i'm gonna I don't know, this is one we've I've, we've had for a little bit uh we got it i think at the beginning of may and at first i was kind of like oh okay uh do we want to like do a whole thing save it for a feedback show like maybe you know have someone on and then figure out how to try to approach it well yeah and then i the more i thought about it i realized like with it being pride month and the notable increase in visibility in the trans community Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, within my own family uh, my as I was explaining to my guests this weekend my mother's cousin's spouse I was informed of a year ago announced that they were trans and since then has transitioned and this past week I believe legally got their name changed Oh, yay! Judge. I know, and they were at Pride, and I was hoping to see them, and I did not. And uh, they were helping with the one booth and some stuff. They actually got their picture taken with the mayor, who was our like key spokesperson at the fest, uh, and March to the parade and different stuff. Ah. So, um, I haven't had a chance to talk to them. Uh, as a couple and to you know get like kind of like hey this is interesting i felt for the longest time like the only person in the whole side of the family Uh, (laughs) like as a part of the bigger community you know of of Mm -hmm. chosen family and uh yeah so and then also uh sort of unrelated but the same side of the family my one of my mother's cousins daughters got married to her wife in vegas like a week and a half ago <laughs> which i knew nothing Did about they elope no like the family some of the family members went out to vegas i thought oh. they were going on a vacation i don't know nothing like i watch <laughs> i read facebook there's a little posts they go to vegas blah 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 okay but then all of a sudden i see we're so excited for the happy couple and then here's a post of the two of them both nice women and white dresses like not extravagant wedding gowns but you know and 
they're holding a sign. But I didn't. This is I'm going to own my own ignorance. And I told my best friends that were here this weekend. I said when I first looked at the picture, I was like, "Oh, that was so nice. They traveled together. They got married, like not to each other, like <laughs> two different couples got married, and the two brides posed for a picture with each other." Until I read the side they were holding down below, and <laughs> it said "just married" and had both their first names and the date. And then I was like, "Oh, it clicked." Oof. They, you, got, no. they, they, <laughs> they, they done got married to each you, other. You, you, you assumed it was straight. Well, because because I don't, I'm not that connected with my families, and I have felt like the the what do we call it? The black sheep, the the pink yeah. sheep, the whatever. No like, wolf. I don't know. Right. Like I've I felt like I'm the only gay in the bunch. Way. Right. Right. I I was about to say the only gay in the village, but it's not the right way to phrase it. But. You know, like on both sides of the family, to my knowledge, I'm the only, I'm the only different one. Nobody right. else is, is out to my knowledge as, as bi, or lesbian, or another, uh, you know, identified as gay or. I at least queer. had a, I at least or, had a gay older cousin. Uh, well, yeah, right. You are aware of your gay older cousin. Uh, you are uh, very aware of your gay older cousin. I'm very aware of him too. Anyways, you sure to. <laughs> Anyways, so like to find out about the the uh, my mother a year ago had said to me, by the way, so and so came out as trans, and I said, really? Because I didn't see that coming. Um, not that you can see these things. But I think sometimes we, as our own community of choice, feel like we have some awareness. Um, and I don't mean gaydar. I just mean mm -hmm. like, like you could, like you could see, like they were uncomfortable or struggled or just something. Mm -hmm. And I was never really quite aware. And now that I've seen that they've transitioned, they changed their name of their Facebook profile. They came out on Facebook recently with their their chosen identity and like are extremely happy. I mean, it's just like it's it's a ton of love that's coming at them and I'm very happy about it. But I was like I was like, okay. Like Like it came out of nowhere. To me it did. Yeah. And not to everyone else, but to you, it did. So right, and so that happened. Maybe it was just the amount of exposure you had before was just not like Enough well, right, to, to really be, overexpose to that? Right. To be fair, I don't really see that side of the family. I haven't seen that side of the family yeah. since a relative passed away at a funeral a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and so you didn't have that, enough that, data, right? We we don't. Maybe see you would have picked it up or something. Often, we don't even do the raffle or the raffle the reunion. That's what I wanted. As a word, we don't even really do the reunion like we used to. It's on that side of the family. Mm. So, so first, I know I, I have a periphery awareness that this person is transitioning. Then I find out about my cousin's daughter's my second cousin once removed daughter, which makes her my second cousin's second twice removed. Anyways, look it up <laughs> online. I make more sense when you know how that really gets worded. So, but they got married in Vegas, and I was kind of like, okay, like at least <laughs> one side of the family, mom's side. Has something going on. Still nothing on dad's side. So, not that not that people even have to come out. Y'all like do whatever is making you feel. You do you and safe. So all strongly of that, recommended the come out thing, but you know you, you do when you want to, and or right. if you want to. So we're not going to pressure you, but just so encourage. That be, right. That being said. Uh, so you know a lot of this stuff has been kind of on my mind, and then I've noticed like a lot more pink, blue, white pride flags for the trans community and uh, people posting about that amongst us that are lesbian, bi, and gay or even asexual, gender, queer, you know, the rest of the grouping of the community are being supportive of the trans community and saying, you know, that, um, and maybe some of it has to do with the fact that this year was Stonewall's 50th and we are trying very much to take back the ownership of the fact that trans individuals of color helped make that event happen mm -hmm. unintentionally yeah. it was not a planned thing it just happened mm -hmm. so all of that being said we get this email and 
at first when I, I skimmed it, when we first got it, I felt in the moment I took it as like highly critical. And so I kind of parked it on a shelf and I thought we need to engage this in, in, a, in a certain way and not really like feel like we're going to be defensive. And mm-hmm. so then I went back and I kind of reviewed it recently and I was like, oh, OK, so it's not all like sunshine and lollipops, but it's also not all like doom and gloom and rain kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I think what's what's good of us that I like is to kind of talk a little bit about some of the points in the, the email that we got, but also to say, hey, like own where we are kind of in our own ignorance in some ways mm-hmm. on stuff uh, when it comes to that. So uh, I think that the thing for us that we look at is where are we at in our comfort, our familiarity? Uh, mm-hmm. How do we feel about if we can relate to other individuals? And what I've really come to determine is, in a way, I'm probably feeling like other people felt when I came out. And how mm-hmm. to talk to me, how to be around me, how to interact with me, because they didn't quite know what was going on or happening. Um, mm you know, in, in my own life. So, I mean, I, I think there's a little bit of a responsibility for us to at least say, like, what our comfort is, our knowledge, and all of that kind of jazz. Uh, because I I know for certain some of the things in here I'm going to own up to, I think, are directly me, even though they aren't said they're directly me. Um, <laughs> I mean, no, it's like, I, I mean, I'm reading it, and I'm like, mm, that might have been me. Not sure. <laughs> Uh, so the episode's called Trans Bear Listener because that's what we got as the email subject. And it's something that's actually, in, in full disclosure, has been a topic idea for a long time. Yes. Uh, it's been in the in our one, actually it's been in probably two different documents. But what we haven't had, I think, is a personal connection to an individual that we felt comfortable to have them come on mm-hmm. and do an interview with and have a discussion We've had some like uh, one, two, three removed kind of mm-hmm. individuals. Like someone knows someone who knows someone or is aware of someone. Um, but the thing is, is that I think we sometimes feel like we've tried to talk about things and we don't exactly step the right direction unintentionally. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like, because this can be a really important subject, but also at the same time, um, not one person ever represents any particular larger thing. True. Just also like, true. you know, yeah. we've, we've had a whole bunch of people talk about cake. And we usually preface, like, this person, you know, usually, whoever, usually whoever on says, like, I don't represent all the kink attitudes about mm-hmm. this aspect and that kind of stuff. So, uh, I thought maybe the way we approach this is like we talk about this particular email and feedback. And then, you know, if there are people who uh, apparently are in the audience that listen and are interested in engaging us more and or being on, like we can talk about that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and, and feel more comfortable about something because as the one who primarily kind of puts things together and, and books some people and stuff. I'm going to own, I think I've been very hesitant because I don't, uh, OCD moment. I don't want to <laughs> get it wrong. And yeah. it's not, I would always get it wrong, but at the same time, like, how do you yeah. know when it's going to be okay? If you don't have that personal connection, I guess, mm-hmm. like to be fair for those that um, are maybe newer to the podcast, a lot of the guests that we've had on, we, we pretty much know true so it's easier to have someone on that we have like a one-to-one connection if not a two two to one or even all all three of us knowing that person so uh and we've been blessed some people we didn't really know we might have fantasized about first and then they came (laughs) and now we're like you know great online friends um (laughs) speaking of which i need to reach back up to daddy hadrian about coming back (laughs) so back on topic uh so 
we got an email. Subject was transferred listener. Uh, we got it earlier this summer. And so um, I, I just want to say this to the individual that said it in. They started off and said that they felt they were going to kind of ramble um, in a stream of consciousness thing. I, I'm personally, I'm perfectly down with that. That's the way most of the conversations with my good mm-hmm. friends go. So, like, if you, same here. There's a reason why they are hours long. <laughs> yes. That's also read. part of why our podcast is called Indeterminate Link. This is a thing. Uh, not really, also but sure. it just kind of ended it that way. <laughs> well, some are about an hour, some are longer, some have been really long. So, some are um, cut in two because they're just so damn long. Exactly. So in this case, um, this individual had let us know, uh, our audience listener said that they uh, were com- listening to our most recent podcast on Google Podcasts, shout out, uh, thought um, that they would actually Google our podcast plus the keyword transgender. So this is a tip of the hat to Damon for all the work he does behind the scenes during the shows. He's always clickety clackety, like typing in keywords of things that we're discussing. Uh, yep. <laughs> so the individual... Ag. Said right, so those those keywords, those tags, our submitter said they were happy to discover that some of the episodes had been tagged as transgendered, so they could listen and, and get the tea. Uh, listen to a few of them, although this part I'm not sure about. They said for some reason the website stopped playing them. They weren't sure if it was the phone or the site. Uh, so that part. Um, so really quick, off you know again, kind of not to go too far from the topic, but it's sometimes the it's sometimes the phone. Cause, so I've listened to the podcast every once in a while. I listen to the podcast, believe it or not. <gasps> and, yeah, sucker. Yeah, sometimes I do. Clutch the pearls, girl. Come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I <saw> that. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, but sometimes I listen to it on my phone, and it's. I, I think it's just that if you don't like listen to it consistently, like I start and stop because I'm I'm sometimes listening to it while I'm work. If you don't pay attention to it it'll for some reason like just stop. Um, I've usually had to unfortunately um, refresh the page, which then brings it back up, but it brings it back up to the beginning. So you right. lose where you were. Um, I don't know if that's what you've been in dealing with or not, but that was one of the things I did notice. And it was mostly while I was listening to it on my phone. Um, I try not to stream a whole lot on my work desktop. So yeah, so I think I think the the code of the player that's used for streaming that's the key issue is I've noticed I agree with you, David. Like, not that I use the use listening to the show through the website very much, but I used to more, uh, especially way older ones. Um, mm-hmm. And instead of downloading the MP3 file, I just kind of stream play it. But the player I think is is. Uh, coded in a real simplistic way to basically start at the beginning, stop at the end, and that mm-hmm. whole pausing in the middle thing, I don't think it breaks anything, but because it is streaming, I think it just kind of burps or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's not an excuse, that's just a theory. Um, so yeah, anyways... That's, they, that's pretty much the point when it comes to uh, streaming it on the web. If it, if you get it through the pod, a podcast player, which our RSS feed to make sure that it doesn't get overloaded or anything uh, doesn't have all the episodes all at once. So, um, mm-hmm. but, uh, uh, so you, you would only get like to a certain point in back episodes. Uh, mm. uh, but if you were going through like Apple podcasts or Google play podcasts, you basically not the actual website, but the RSS feed, um, then uh, you'll get, it should be better than uh-huh. going through the web. But when you want to listen to some of those past episodes, ones that are there, um, you can only go back so far. In the, like, yeah. The feeds. So my recommendation mm-hmm. would be is if you think that's what you want to do, like go back and listen to some old ones, uh, is to do the old right click on the player thing and see if there's a save as. Um, and it might let you save it Download, as an MP3 yeah. file. And then you can then you can then you can damn well play it anywhere you want, uh, and it should be the whole episode. So, uh, moving on uh, back to the topic at hand. So um, they said I don't want this to come across as dressing down or anything like that. I really just want to educate. Mostly, I want to call back to some stuff I heard in CL three eighty eight entourage feedback, and I don't remember that. 
one. Uh, <laughs> but then again, we've done hundreds of episodes, so it's very difficult for me to like recall back uh, 130 something episodes or 126 mm-hmm. something. Uh, they also said also COL 474 and 475, which is Bear World Weekend. Now, those I remember better because that was just last summer, August. <laughs> and we recorded yeah. it twice because poor Adam, we had such a difficulty the first time around trying to tech wise record the show. So then we did it a second time, which was better, but not ideal. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they go on and say in 388, uh, on the better side of things of what I've heard, but one of the things that stood out to me was the use of the term female genitalia. Mm. Uh, obviously, I don't speak for all of the trans community, but one thing that holds true for me and most trans people I know would prefer if you don't say things like that. To put it in slogany terms, quote unquote, it's not female genitalia, I'm a man, and it's mine, end quote. A better way to talk about it would be someone who has not had surgery or someone with their original parts. Yeah, that was also mm. four years ago. I have learned, but that's not an excuse. Right. I'm just saying I should be better now. Well, uh, and I apologize, so, but I should be better. Now. So COL 388 was um, recorded on, well, was posted on October 23rd, 2016. Um, so it was a few years ago. Three years ago. And I agree with you, Jeff, that, you know, that's not necessarily, we're not for it. We're just, I think some of us especially have learned a lot more through time and yeah. education. Right. And, ex- so and plus experience. Si- plus side, you are totally right. Well, and I hope, this is... I hope, <laughs> I think I'm better now. <laughs> okay. So, but this is the one of the ones that I thought it was me. Mm-hmm. Like mm. in reading it, I'm like, I wouldn't well, be surprised kinda... if I said, because I thought it was me too, though. So. <laughs> Well, anyway, as I've been, we all thought it was us. <laughs> Apparently, uh, well, obviously it was one of us or all of us. I don't know. Uh, I know that because I have a academic background, I have graduated from college with a bachelor's, and I had an, kind of an accelerated English uh, track in high mm-hmm. school. It wasn't officially AP, but because of my experience, I tend to be wordy. And no, I, not okay. When I say wordy, I don't mean talkative, which is also true. <laughs> I meant that I use words that are more uh, at a different level in terms of like defining how I talk. They're just words yeah. that I know, and therefore I use them. When I was younger, yes, I would use words to sound smarter. I don't feel that way now. I just Mm -hmm. use the words, the vocabulary that I have. What I always tend to forget when the feedback comes back to me is not everyone knows all the words I use. So some people feel uncomfortable because they don't feel smart because they don't know what indeterminate means. Or that's just a random word. You know, like they don't know what verbose means. Mm -hmm. It means to be very talkative. Um, (laughs) So that to me, female genitalia sounds very clinical. And sounds like something I would have said because I would have been like trying to to be get to get it right or uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'd have to listen to the episode again to figure out who said it. But in any case, um, agreed. Um, especially now, I think all of us have kind of been better educated on um, the trans community and know a little bit more or some more about how to properly address those kind of phrases. So um, kudos to you, um, our listener, for kind of pointing that out, because agreed. I pro- if if it wasn't, I mean, it had to have been one of us, you know, because there were four, there were three of us and three, there were four people on that episode and three of us are here. So it's the only one that it couldn't have been is no longer on the show right now. But in either case, I think we've gotten a lot more, a lot more. We've gotten more educated. Right. And that being said, they also go on to explain that uh, basically the best way to know what to say is to ask them what they want used as terminology, like Mm -hmm. what kind of reference. Uh, As they they said, quote, unquote, in the email, just ask what he wants his junk called. (laughs) Yeah. Which really kind of cracks me up, because technically that's what you probably do to everybody. But I guess I just don't think of it like that. 
Um, so, uh, would you prefer cock? Would you prefer penis? Would you first prefer something else? Yeah. <laughs> Little Johnny. Um, okay. Stewart. It's just Stewart. Stewart. Stuart um, Little. So, in terms of you know, when it comes to to trans individuals, I I will own that I try to be conscious of the fact that I think that that a trans identifying individual feels very self conscious about their body because that's the first thing people want to focus, especially when it comes to learning that someone is trans. I think that what they find uncomfortable, even maybe. Uh, like stomach upsetting is that people immediately want to think about the genitalia, which is no different than if I come out to somebody and the first thing they want to think about is me having sex Mm -hmm. because they're, they're identifying me as a homosexual. So therefore immediately they're thinking about me and what I do with dicks. So I get it. Like the reality is that we are such a, I don't want to say we. I have been brought up in a way to be uh, a outside to inside kind of person. Mm -hmm. I don't immediately, when every time I meet an individual, I don't immediately see past the facade. And I don't mean that they're fake. I mean past their, what they put out in the world to see the heart Mm -hmm. of who they are. I am a visual person, so I immediately assess them by how they present themselves and then get to know them and go from there. Uh, which I guess is a very different medium when it comes to podcasting, especially for audio. Like if you only listen to the voices of people. Mm-hmm. No, I think yeah. that. So, uh, so that being said, I know that this is an area that I want to be better about is selecting better ways to phrase things. Um, when it comes to that. So thank you for letting us know uh, and how we can make uh, improvements in that. So going on, uh, they went on to say that the other thing that stuck out to them was uh, someone, and they weren't sure who it said, had uh, made a comment that they couldn't even uh, picture playing with a trans guy who had had bottom surgery, even if they were attracted to him. Uh, I don't remember this in the episodes, but I'm not going to like say that it never happened. Mm. And again, it's one of those things where you mentioned it, it was like, uh, basically any, anything that was bad, I, I blame that it's probably was me. <laughs> well, and this is the thing is, it's, I don't and sometimes think... it's more of I, I, and at least for me, it's, it's, I don't understand is kind of the big thing is like if they did have bottom surgery, how would that be? How would, how would that feel? What? Well, like, and that's... like you could almost say is like, I can picture having sex with a, another cis man easily, right. but someone who is not a cis man, it's more difficult because I haven't experienced it. Well, and so, that's, the, that's the thing I think that is a, a piece of this, like this little puzzle here is I, I agree with you, Jeff. I have never been physically intimate with a cis woman or a trans woman hmm. and therefore do not know what that experience would be like. Or a trans man. Or a trans man. So... All of my knowledge and my limited capacity of imagination, I guess is what I'll say, is to the fact that I don't know what that's like. It's fear in the unknown, almost. Right. And right? on top of that, I think like what I have said is, and I know that that's limiting in a way, is that I don't... Um, because I currently in my capacity of my sexuality know what I like and what I like to do I kind of stayed that way so yes while we've had like a series about kink and other stuff 
I'm going to own, I'm probably pretty basic. Mm. Um, I don't mean, I don't know how to say it. I mean, you could say technically vanilla, not that I want to put a flavor on it. Uh, but yeah, so I own that if I were to meet an individual who had had bottom surgery, I would not, I mean, it would be a whole new realm to be in. And probably mm. because I'm so self-conscious about myself as it is, I would probably be way too much full of anxiety and stress to be with a, an individual that I don't know I can relate to, like, and mm. what, and, and how to interact with. Um, is that fair to the individual? Absolutely not. It's all on me. Mm. I'm going to own that. But and, and as I'm talking, I'm like, well, is this any different than the first time you were the guy? No, <laughs> technically. Although I had seen a lot of porn by that time. Um, <laughs> wow. Your expectations I mean, were set. It was all on VHS tape, technically. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that I ordered online at college and had hiding in a drawer under me. TV and VCR player, but anyways, um, but yeah, like and that goes goes to what Adrian, what well, what what you know, Adrian talked about previously was like you know we educated ourselves very poorly through what media presented to us, mm -hmm. and while I did own bisexual content, the reason I owned the bisexual content was not for the the cis women, it was the gateway to the cis men that were in it. So for me, yes, I have always been focused on that portion of the sexuality and the functionality. Mm -hmm. Could it change? Absolutely. Would it change? I don't know. I'm far yeah. more neutral about it now than I think I have been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So in the, in the email that we got, they said, I don't ever want to force anyone to have uh, sex with me who doesn't want to. Um, and like as long as someone doesn't go out of their way to be a fuck stick to call me disgusting or tell me that I'm not allowed in a gay space or anything like that. It's okay with me that someone may not be interested because of this, uh, because of the equipment I've got End quote. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, agreed. I mean, it's one of these things where like, just don't, don't be an asshole. Don't be, you know, I know it's the, the phrase is don't be a dick, but I don't think it's an appropriate say, saying to say right now. But I say just don't be, don't, don't make it so obvious or so off putting to the person. If you're not interested or you're not attracted, then just be polite and just advise that you're not. And most of the time, they'll be understanding. You know, most of the time it happens. You can get all hot and heavy in a bar and make out and do all kinds of things. And then you get in that space where you're alone and the mood is shifted and everything changes and the light bulbs, the lights come on or whatever. And change and you're no longer as it once attracted to them as you once were. It happens. But what you don't do is you don't make a, a scene. You don't make a point to put out, put the other person down. Or make it seem like it's their fault that you're not attracted to them anymore. This Just be honest, like, right. and respectful. Honest and respectful. Those are the two things I will say is the biggest thing about it is it's okay because most of the time they will understand. Yeah. And I think if I if I know what to expect beforehand, right. I can make better, more. Diplomatically, mm -hmm. uh, uh, discussions about the situation. Right. So, like, so, right now, I when I like, if I were were to say I can't picture myself uh, playing with a trans man who had bottom sur surgery, it's it's literally that I I don't even know what it looks like if I'd be attracted or how it would work. I I'm suffering from a lack of knowledge. But like mm -hmm. the the nice thing about being uh, a introvert that gets bored at bars uh, too much, that uh, all the only way that he's gonna get get laid is when he picks somebody up on an app, um, is I get pictures first. So I get the pictures, 
I know what's going to happen. I or or I can get an idea, get more of an image of what's what is happening in, in my mind. Mm-hmm. That the situation changes. It could be like, mm-hmm. eh, no, I don't really want to. I'm sorry. I apologize. Blah 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 blah. It's just not my thing. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's all me. It's not you. It's, it's all me. Um, yeah. You know, or it might be, huh? I've never tried that. I'm intrigued. Bend over. I, Let's discuss it. That sort of thing. <laughs> well, so here's here's what it comes down to. I'm going to own this. In a perfect world, I would be far more receptive to being involved with the person purely because of who the person is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am not that way. I am incredibly uh, driven by like how I feel, by what happens with me hormonally because of what happens like like visually like Mm -hmm. what i take in like elicits emotional and physical responses for me so as an example yesterday there are guys at pride who come up to the table some of them with their partners some of them without some of them with their friends whatever uh i want to own it there was some there was some you know individuals who stopped and i was like hey like i didn't say that but yeah you know i was mentally saying it yeah i was really intrigued but i'm assessing them and making a whole set of presumptions so yes if it was revealed at a later time about that you know this this understandably very important and personal aspect of them is something that i had not thought about or prepared for because mm-hmm. I'm going in one direction, presuming something, which we should all be very careful about. Mm-hmm. Um, Agreed. You know, making assumptions about other people is that I would kind of have to self-assess and determine how I feel about those things. I I think I'm definitively at a loss. I'm on the I'm on the negative side of things in this um, potential because I've never been with a cisgender woman like i couldn't handle like making out with a cisgender woman so like that's as far as that went uh but that was probably that was more about anxiety because uh someone who i was the very first person i ever dated was uh i don't want to say an accelerated learner but (laughs) was more experienced than me and wanted to do things that i had not even thought about so I kind of like mm. was, was very like not uh, prepared for that at all. Maybe that stunted me. Probably should go to therapy about that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Nice. So well, yeah, like I I, I, get I get uncomfortable, and uh, for me personally, it's far easier to shut down because of that discomfort, mm-hmm. and just be like, nope. Yeah. And and that's absolutely not fair to the other individual. It's also not fair to me. And what the mm-hmm. potential of the experience could be. Exactly. Yeah. It's actually I'm not gonna I don't think there's anything more I want to add to this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, to this portion of the conversation. Right. Yeah. Now in this paragraph they do go on. Um, they said if someone would have sex with the exact same cis dude, but wouldn't do that with guys who have had bottom surgery. They don't understand that, meaning the person who submitted this. What they say is, since they there are definitely trans guys that you can't tell at all, at least until they come. Now, dear audience member and email submission writer, you have opened a Pandora's box for me I was not prepared for. Because <laughs> I was not aware, because I am an uneducated asshole. Mm-hmm. I was not aware that that was a thing like that you could have surgery and be, I don't know how else to say it. And I'm so cautious right now because I I don't want to become more of a jerk about this. I was not aware of the functionality. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, We need, we need some education on this. There are, we need pictures. uh, We need uh, porn. We need, Oh my God. We we need we need like demonstrations. 
Uh, I would like a class. I oh will <laughs> gladly <laughs> attend that class naked if necessary. Oh my Jesus. Um, okay. This is, this is, I need, I need to be there informed. I need my dumb ass. Uh, 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 I need this dumb ass needs to be educated. Well, okay. Okay. I'm just going to own that when Jeff was just talking a moment ago, for some reason, every time he said, I, I took it as we. No, he said, I, 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 me, myself. I know you did, but this is what the brain does. And I'm like, there was a part of me that was like, what, 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 what is this we business? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, no, I, 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 I. I, I'm not not sitting in a classroom naked, like, to get educated. Well. Might be able to do that at Claw. And and no, again, I know, I know, and again, I know, but that's where I was like, hold up. This is one of the reasons why I said class. I would do that. I, I would participate I'm in the class. If I... wrong. I'm explaining that my brain, for some reason, decided to swap pronouns out and turn it into a we <laughs> plural instead of just you saying I would. I was like, I don't know why. Gary, it's not I all about you. I thought you were saying all three of us would do this. And I was like, hold the phone. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, anyway, I'm not, I'm not holding that. the phone in the so, first place. <laughs> There's wow. no phone. Here. It's all me. Wow. That's... There's that. Um, but I do know this as I. Anyways. There are certain surgeries that can be done that give more physical representations of the other gender's genitalia. Because I, I wouldn't be surprised her. if it, if there was was transparent and had had the a, a surgery like that. I don't care about the cum part of it. Well, kind of, but that's another matter altogether. I and I, yeah. that's that's where I'm still lacking information. Right, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, right. what do you mean by that? Do you mean there's a lack of or? I mean, well, how how does that work? I, I, I th- here's my th- here's where my ignorance is because I really haven't read up on this and I don't know people and I haven't had these conversations. So, like, this is I guess this is us opening up the the invitation to folks, De- dear um, listeners. This is a point where we are just asking questions to get answers, which we will probably get in the future, hopefully. I I presumed when uh, a cis woman is a trans man that there would not really be remotely the same functionality mm-hmm. so i have been living with that uh archaic antique mindset i guess or an educated viewpoint whatever mm-hmm. um so yeah like that, that that comment in the email i'm pointing my computer screen i was <laughs> like oh oh can you elaborate, yeah. please? Kind of a horse of a different color. Quote, mm-hmm. Wizard of Oz. Which yeah. came from... Oh, that's a horse of a different color. color. Anywho. Yeah. It, it, it's... it's <clears throat> Again, I won't... I cannot speak for all trans individuals. I will only go on my personal experiences. Okay? Um, as someone... I have um, played with a trans man before. And... This person had a set of genitalia representative of the gender that they prefer. And if if what I am remembering from our experience is true, yes, you you can't really tell the difference until they are ready to come, quote unquote. I, to orgasm. And again, I am not. That yes, I am. I am. That's I am weird. again not educated enough to explain it because I don't know. Like I, I know right. it's yeah. So again, thank you, um, individual, for speaking this part. And I will say this now: I would, I actually would love to have you on the show to talk mm-hmm. more about some of these things because, as someone who has had limited experience with trans men. Um, there's a part of me that wants to know more. Mm-hmm. I I am going to own that my curiosity is like a like a goddamn like it's like beyond peak right now. You're like, I am like jumping higher than what? the top of Mount Everest. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
peaked. Yes. You are overloading the uh, soundboard with how peaked you are. Peak it. <laughs> peak it, I tell you. Um, I'm trying to make analogies in regards to peaking. Uh, ah. Ah. Okay. ah. Got it. All right. Got it. So. Yeah. Reminding um, the whole thing. Anyway. And and I'm, so here's here's my thought between the two of you. Please excuse us, dear audience. Um, I'm thinking Hadrian might be a good, like, short future guest to discuss a little bit more about this. Because I have a feeling he knows a lot more than I do at this moment. Basically, oh, if we need we need somebody who who probably know, has more information about sex in any way, shape, or form than Hadrian. It's kind of like they just who we go to. I mean, it's not Doctor Ruth, but. Anyways, uh, <laughs> good, that's a good. He's, he's now next time he's come comes on the show, he's going to start speaking like Doctor Ruth. Oh boy, sex talk with Doctor or with Daddy Hadrian. Yeah. All right. So uh, to get back to the email that we received, then they go on to say that in episodes four seventy four slash four seventy five, it was neat to hear about the gender neutral contests. It sounded like it would be acceptable for a trans man to compete in the Mister Best contest i think they mean mr bear uh because i don't remember the title probably uh they said but i wanted to verify because having cub be gender neutral is great but the idea of mandating that trans men couldn't compete in mr bear or trans women couldn't compete in ms bear sounds bad i don't think that was the case though so let me go back i'm going to the website just so that you're aware um, so for, it does have a note for gender eligibility okay. for the titles. Mr. Okay. Bear is only open to contestants identifying as male. Ms. Bear is only open to contestants identifying as female. The cub title is open to all genders. So this is a direct quote from their uh, website. This is, so Ms. This is not so saying the, cis male or cis right, right, right. female. It's just Correct. M- yeah. Male or female. So it gives the binary and one that's not binary. Yeah. Right. So So it's it's he, him, she, her, and they, them. Three titles. Yes. So it's more about your pronoun. Technically, yes. Yeah. Correct. Now, to be fair, and I'm not going to, this is not saying anything about World Bear Weekend uh, or Adam, who we know personally, uh, that has been on as a guest. These are references to the podcast from a year ago. Mm-hmm. As much as I know of, nothing has changed with that contest in terms of like the requirements and, and those aspects of things. Based on what Damon's saying, I'm pretty sure that's the way it was before. I'm pretty sure. And you just really needed to be sure that you read the wording. It's about how the individual identifies. I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but yeah, I like that we know that now for certain that basically – the whole reason of having two different titles allows for those spaces for the identities. Mm-hmm. And their decision is that Cub does not have that requirement. So in a way you have mm-hmm. a quote unquote male title, a quote unquote female title, and then you have a category that does not have gender specified to it. So actually if you didn't consider yourself binary identified, then that would be the category yeah, most likely. You could potentially go for that one, yes. Or, or and if you did, the, the, did consider yourself binary identified, you could still compete for cup. Yes, correct. Yes, Damon, you were saying. And just so you're aware, the only other caveat to this, the contest, just so you're aware, is that um, you have to have won a title previously. So it could be a bar title. It could be a state. Um, contestants must already have won a title from a bar, state, regional, national, or international contest within the last four years. So while, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to own this right now. While World Bear may be kind of gender, what have you, the con- you have to have done a contest beforehand in order to get into the show. So it also depends relatively on what contest you do before then. Um Correct. So um, those of us who know the bear community and know it pretty well, there are a lot of bear related titles, but they all tend to be Mr. 
Mm-hmm. Just I'm just putting it out there. There are right. some communities that are opening the doors and opening the stages for um, female identified bears and and um, non gender specific um, titles. But it it doesn't say necessarily reference a bear title, just a title, right? Correct. Agreed. So yes. So while we're familiar with the titles in bear bear adjacent uh communities there may also be non mm-hmm. with other titles which are more common for 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 female specifics or yeah female yeah. specifics yeah. she her so yeah i th- i think we're all going through this together like this mm-hmm. Progressing, evolving, changing kind of landscape, and finding our way in it, um, which I'm cool with. You know, I'm. It, I guess as you get older, you feel less and less like there's stuff to learn. Mm-hmm. But I welcome that because the last thing I ever want to feel is like I know it all because I don't. But I think the you know having been out now more than I was in the closet in my lifetime, mm-hmm. like you. I guess you kind of reach a point where you don't probably think to yourself, been there, done that, but the amount of exposure unfortunately diminishes, I think, in most of us, the importance of something, because you're around it so much, you just, you kind of get blind to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like porn, for instance. Like sometimes you see, this is kind of a non sequitur, but like as an example, your, uh, have you seen these videos where like someone's at a restaurant and someone hacked the TV and like is streaming like, you know, Pornhub? Yeah. In like the the hotel lobby or something like that. And there's a part of me, people like some people are like, oh my god, isn't this shocking? And blah blah blah. And there's a part of me that's like, would I even notice? <laughs> I'm gonna own it. Like I've seen it enough frequently in my life that I it probably wouldn't even phase me. <laughs> I fair enough. No, yeah. I mean I don't. Fair. So I, the whole point I, of me saying that is, I think the more you're familiar with something or, or you're uh, exposed to it, and yeah. you know around it, then the less significance it has in that. And so, therefore, pronouns, how an individual presents themselves to a title, all that kind of stuff, isn't on the forefront for me, unless I guess it's being talked about like directly to me. Yeah, I I know for me personally, I'm learning, not every day, but I keep learning. Um, one of the things that people are starting to ask is um, putting identifiers like businesses and professionals on like their business cards and um, in their signatures, because it's a way to kind of get that conversation started or going so right. that you're not inappropriately misgendering someone because of your education in like you know formal speak and Mm -hmm. you know um you know letter writing because like someone who has you know um been dealing with professional writing for a long time and something along the line and emails and such it often becomes really complicated because you can look at someone's name and assume their gender but you could be wrong you could be totally wrong there are i believe there are some companies that like in company directories you know how you Mm -hmm. in company directories you get a whole bunch of different different options that they mm-hmm. also have have different options like for the salutation the the mr mm-hmm. as mr mrs ms mix um mm-hmm. and they'll even have a section there for pronouns mm-hmm. uh in fact the place that i'm working at uh, has that in their directory yeah so w- which when i found that out i'm like Oh, this is cool. And I looked at the drop down just to make sure it didn't just say him, he, him, she, her. And then it was a they, them. And I'm like, this is amazing. And I was very, yeah. very, very happy. I was very proud. And, and, and uh, thing. So, yeah, I think the one thing about this, because it seems that the trans community has been left behind on the T in the LGBT. Uh, Q Q I I A B C D E F G H I J K L M N P. Anyway, um, uh, community. Um, 
the the T hasn't really been emphasized much at all until mm-hmm. relatively recently. Within what was it, five ten years, I think. I don't think there were there was much even so, before then. It, I mean, it was there. I mean, some of our our like uh, uh, gay anthem movies: Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Um All those uh, they essentially are dealing with trans people in in one trans way, shape, or form. Um, but not until recently where it's really become more of a bigger thing where the pronouns have started to be a thing. Um, because until, I don't remember when even it's just, but it seems very recently is when the, they, them started to come out more. And I started learning about that. Um, and for, for being that around for such a long time the younger youngins are probably going to pick this up much faster than us old fogies are and i will admit i'm having trouble and it is my fault you know when they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks well (laughs) it's not entirely true it is still relatively true but not entirely true you can teach us it just may be a little bit harder than training the new pups in round Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, yeah. part of it is exposure, but it's also about frequency. And, and this isn't an excuse, but I think about how the, we re- turn over a new year. Next year, it'll probably take till about June of 2020 for us to stop writing 2019. Yeah. Like, you just become more familiar with it. I saw a whole bunch of stickers yesterday at Pride that said, my pronouns are dun, dun, dun. I thought that was kind of cool. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't get one of those stickers. No one offered me one of those stickers. But, you know. Yeah, I. It is becoming more pronounced. Yeah, mm-hmm. I went to an um, event um, a few years ago. Um, it was a PinguaCon um, crafter, everything kind of almost honestly everything kind of um, event, and and stickers all over the place about like what your pronouns were, and you could put them, you know, on your badge and on yourself to kind of give some people that idea of what you would prefer to be. Um, addressed by um i've it's i don't want to and i want to say this i don't think it's a new thing i just think it has now become part of a it's crossed into our thresholds of um it, it's, uh, it's it's been brought closer to the spotlight yeah you know to, it's, and it's, ours, it's, our, it's, our it's been vaguely threshold. there in the background it was just the it was just a bit player, and now they get to play the lead. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think that's that's like one that. of the things we need to do when you're talking about activism in this community. This is this is where it is. I think we're getting to a point where the star of the show isn't the the what I would call the basics, the plain ordinary uh, uh, G's and L's. We need to to talk about our later uh, T's. Because mm-hmm. now it's their turn to the spotlight. It's their time. Well, what's unfortunate is is that I think we did a, a huge disservice over the past 50 plus years mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. not recognize the humanity of individuals who are trans mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. just simply how they want to present themselves. Um, I am never, ever in my lifetime expecting me to ever think – or try to compare or equate my journey with them mm-hmm. and the difficulty of that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very different journey. Well, I mean, I was thinking about how when I talked to this family member about their decision, there was a time in which I wondered for myself if I was like trans, but didn't but didn't know what that was at the time. Like, basically, I was very much trying to sort out in my head as a teenager, like, should I have been the other gender? Mm. Or, and what really what it came down to was, I had this epiphany, this revelation, this moment, this aha, in which I desired to be a woman, not because I was, I felt like, uh, dysmorphic into the body I was. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a woman because I thought it would be easier to get men. Like, 
and I don't mean to get men like to have sex with them. I, I mean, ultimately, but <laughs> I was jealous of the fact that girls naturally could flirt with boys, could date boys, could be around boys, like, and boys would reciprocally be okay with that and interested in it. That's mm-hmm. really what it came down to is I was struggling with the fact that the ease with which they interacted with each other was not what I had or was yeah. able to experience. And so I spent a small, a brief amount of time, a window, I don't know how long, but it wasn't very long, in which I fantasized and thought, as a teenager struggling with my sexuality, would it be easier if I had been or if I was the opposite gender in mm-hmm. a binary concept? And after I came out, uh, one of my parents actually made mention to me about, like, did I want to be the other gender? And I said, no, I've thought about it, but I've realized I do not because I am not, I do not feel discomfort in the body that I am in. I don't hate the body that I am in. I do not have issues with it, with being a male. But at the same time, I also recognize notably before I'd had sex with any men and and really understood how men hormonally function, especially as gay slash bisexual men. As a broad statement, it's a very different world, mm-hmm. um, you know. And until I kind of figured out that, like, men in some ways are just basically horn dogs, uh, <laughs> not all of them, but I mean, you know, true. You know that I was kind of like, oh, okay. Sometimes a hole is a hole is a hole is a hole is a hole. So paints the landscape very, very differently. You know, mm-hmm. when you when you when you have very limited knowledge, you have a very limited understanding. It's true. Just as simple as that. So um, the next part in the – to get back to the email, they said, anyhow, I was wondering if you'd ever thought about slash sought out a trans bear to have as a guest on the show to talk about any of that. Ta-da! We already kind of mentioned that at the top or earlier. Yeah. If you missed that. We, we have, and it has been brought up, and we've thought about it. I think for all of us, it's just been something – like we, I think we said we've put it. We've often put it on the back burner. We've probably let it, you know, simmer back in the back of our minds or on our things. And I would like to, and more so now, just to get some more information, some more advice, and talk about things that I know I don't feel necessarily comfortable talking about because it's not my experience, right? So now that we've done that, and Damon, you actually said it earlier, so I think it bears repeating. Uh, our author of the the email that submitted it, our transfer listener, if you're game and you're interested in, let us know, yeah. and you know we'll we'll figure out like how to you know get the show going. And um, I'll say I will say this. Go ahead and chastise me. <laughs> By all means, I think the three of us are open to being course corrected live, just mm. like today when Billy Porter was handling. The presumably cisgender straight woman who was gay splaining things to him. Oh, wow. I heard about that. Talk about gorgeous theatrical art. He handled himself great like a pro, but there was a couple of times where you were like, dang, girl, could you step in the shit anymore? Like, <laughs> as Drew said to me, quit I reading no the cue cards. About. Yeah, it's, it was so, from the World Pride celebrations in, in New York this weekend. And, and for those that don't know, today was the 50th anniversary gay pride parade in New York. It was also World Pride. It was the first time it was World Pride was held in the United States. And it was because of the anniversary of Stonewall. So there was a, I think, seven and a half hour parade of over a hundred thousand participants millions of people in new york city four hours of it was live streamed and shown from abc7 out of new york city drew and i caught two hours of it uh on facebook live and watched it on my tv billy porter billy porter was the the gay (laughs) i use air quotes as the gay he was he was our he was our people representative with the other two anchors who were like from the local news team or whatever. And obviously oh. the man and the woman had been given cards and stuff. They were very nice people and they did relatively well, but there was a couple times when you were like, dang girl, like you just You're like, in. hold on. <laughs> wait, like, wait a second. Hold on. Wait, wait. Just, 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 just shut up. Just, 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 just,
Well, and the thing is, is she's like, oh, look, <laughs> there's the Alliance for Injustice. They like to address injustice. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> it was like watching a really I bad have no scene. idea what's going on. Thanks. I'm trying to make oh. it properly, but I don't have all the information. So, so I have I was earlier today this uh, uh, puppy in a, a lab coat with a beaker on her rear has. I have no idea what's going on. I love the fucking shirt. So, <laughs> but that's anyways, kind of what I feel. That's what I was referencing to because there was a couple of moments where Drew and I just look at each other and we're like, did that just happen? And then we were busted a gut because Billy Porter, for those of you that don't know, is an out uh, actor, is in Pose. Yeah. Has, is the lead that created Kinky Boots uh, on Broadway and has traveled and toured with it. Uh, he mm-hmm. went to Carnegie Mellon uh, Theatrical School. He actually is good friends with someone that I knew from my early days in the bear community. So I'm technically uh, two people removed from Billy. Not that I care because I actually offended him in a gay bar by accident. So I'm <laughs> welcome in his presence. But Wait a minute. A gay guy was offended? All right. So here's the thing. I'm in a leather bar. I'm with a good friend of mine. And they're like, oh, my God. And they're like, blah, 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 blah. You know, they're just, the two of them are just really hit it up, right? My friend turns to me and is like, hey, I want you to meet my friend Gary. I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. And they're like, this is Billy Porter. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's nice to meet you or whatever. And all of a sudden, like, the air around me felt a little icy. And there was this <laughs> like, kind you don't of... know Billy Porter? <laughs> right! There was this reference, like, you should know who it is. And I was like, okay. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not is quite that familiar like, with you. Is that, is, is that like when when uh, a young gay says, I have never seen MAME, and you just go, <gasps> Maybe. Um, so the thing was at this to time. To Wang Fu, thanks, just, for Julie, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. <gasps> to be fair, right. Or the birdcage. Uh, <gasps> so here's the thing is, this is probably like seven years ago, just as a time reference, okay? So when oh, this wow. moment happens at this leather bar, right? And blah, blah, blah. And so, and it's in, it's in Pittsburgh, PA. And obviously, Billy had gone to Carnegie, which is in Pittsburgh, hence, and so did this person uh, who had a theatrical degree. That's how they were friends. They knew each other. Point is, I have this brief moment. It's kind of embarrassing because I don't mean that Billy was so full of himself that he expected me to know who he was. My friend was talking to me like, how could you not know who he is? And it, I was it, like, it was more your friend than it was actually Billy Porter. It, it was just that, like that, not, that wind up picking up here. Yes, but it was yeah. just really just awkward all around because I've never put many people on a pedestal to begin with. I try not to because it becomes more difficult later, like to see them just as a human being. So when this moment is happening, it doesn't help that now I'm being told like has done this show, has like released albums, is known for this song, like. Now their CV is coming to me, like basically their resume of what I would know who they are. And I'm thinking, I still don't know who you are. Oh, no. So I felt yay big. It was very awkward. I don't even know if Billy remembers it. But it taught me a lesson in like, maybe sometimes you just need to shut the hell up instead of being like, nope, sorry, don't know who you are. <laughs> like just. Or I was. Or. Or just, just you know, uh, 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 accept your ignorance and be like, I am so sorry. <laughs> I have no idea who you are. Can you please educate me? Right, right. And and But that wasn't the, the <laughs> moment. I was also notably younger, and I was not willing to, to, to step back. I was more becoming annoyed in the moment because I was, like, being treated like I should know better. And I was like, I don't function. know her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was not being shady. So <laughs> that whole segue, that whole diversion, the point is, is that today Billy handled himself great when, they, when, the, when the interviewers, the co-hosts were kind of like misstepping. He, he was like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> Correction. Right. Correct. Let, me, let me provide you with the correct information. <laughs> right, 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 right. So that being the case, that was earlier today. Uh, so I forgot where that that line of joke came from. Welcome to our non sequitur existence. It's like the good old days. Uh, so yes, if you would like to be a guest and want to have further conversations with us, by all means. Uh, anyone else out there who's in the audience uh, who has experiences and or you know wants to um, join the conversation, let us know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Then they go on and say, also in episode 388, it got brought up how important cock is to some of you. Again, that's fine. So long as someone isn't a total asshole to me, I'm not going to be upset over that being the case. But I do have some interesting stories to tell over that. Now, I'm going to preface this. Uh, I should have said this earlier. We have never named this person because they didn't give us their name. Yeah. So we're not being cagey. We're not like being, you know, I mean, Or we could just be... be we could have just been been they didn't give us permission to provide their name so we were not we're leaving them anonymous as they requested but well in this case they were anonymous well they said they honestly the salutation is at the end it says cheers trans bear there mm -hmm. you go so what i'm about to read is what they said us I think because they said it with a name and they never said don't read this out loud or discuss it it's fair game so I'm just prefacing that because I'm very nervous. You're going to read the whole moment. thing? <laughs> well, I'm going to say some things here, and I All want right. people to understand. Like, I'm not trying to okay. say shit out of turn. They said, because um, they said they have interesting stories to tell. I'm a big bear chub, or rather should probably say a big chubby pocket bear. Pretty hairy, bearded, 5 feet 7, over 300 pounds. Button. <laughs> Check, 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 check. Got it. <laughs> so I know the type of guys I attract, parentheses, and the types I'm into. Me. And parentheses. But I'm quite raising a few my hand. You can't see, you see it, but I'm raising yes. my hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but quite a few times I've had people who have thought that they were like that and then realized when they met me, quote, oh, having a cock isn't nearly as important as I might have thought it was, end quote. Excellent point. Yeah. Duly noted. They go on to say, that's happened many times on Growler and Tumblr, parenthesis, RIP, uh, and parenthesis. But most interestingly, has happened in the midst of a hookup quite a few times. I would be playing with a hot bear who is definitely into me, but his husband slash boyfriend slash partner wouldn't really be interested due to me being trans. But then in the middle of fucking me, he'd shout it to the other room, quote, Hud, you gotta come try this, end quote. Or the boyfriend would lead in to check on us and change his tune and be interested real quick. So again, no shade if it's not your thing, but sometimes stuff could surprise you when they come face to face with the situation. Ah. And, and to be fair, fair even even more recently, my my tune has probably changed slightly uh, from some of the porn that I have found. <laughs> Thanks to some of the porn. Mm -hmm. So the internet is for porn. Porn just, to me just, is very yeah. educational as well as good jackoff material. So it's a kind of a combination thing. I'm just gonna say, part of this reads like, like the the synopsis for some stocky dudes bear films, like fill in the blank studio shit. I'm just <laughs> saying. Or or. Uh, or a uh, Americanized that is version, not a complaint. or an Americanized version of Bear Cub. Yeah, maybe. Or, or a se an Americanized sequel to Bear Cub, like All kind right. of like if it was a like an anthology sort of series. All right. Where it's I kind of like this serious story, and then there's a, this like moment where they have they're doing sex and things come up, such as "Hun, you gotta try this." Okay, so intentional non sequitur. Follow me. This will make sense. Okay. Speaking, okay. speaking of the movie Bear Cub, I immediately think of the sex scene at the very beginning of the movie that shocked the shit out of me because I was not ready for that because I don't watch many foreign films. <laughs> Jump to Netflix. Uh, Aristide Boppins, Tales of the City, the new version on Netflix. Uh huh. If you haven't watched it yet, just be ready for sex scenes. Like... Sexy. Several. <laughs> a, a handful of them, and they don't necessarily shy away. It is not X rated. <laughs> it is not poured. But I will tell you, there is one actor who looks like he gets his ass pounded, and I'm just like, <laughs> damn. And there's a part of me that's like, and this is acting. Technically. And this is acting? This is acting. I mean, maybe, maybe there's not, a question mark that goes along with it. It's kind of well. It's kind of. If you is it acting it, or is he actually feeling the breath? You can tell it's acting. It's not. It's not real sex, but for a facsimile, I was like, I guess I'm just so it was just very by the boring. 
like really shitty version of imitated sex. Mm-hmm. I was not ready for the <laughs> like <laughs> go to pound town, grunting, sweating, like like hip thrusted into ass. Like I was just like, oh hello, okay, we are not shying away from this. This is not John Cameron uh, Mitchell's short bus, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely not that was my, vanillaized like, for like like if, for you, ha- if you haven't seen short bus. Um, that's if real sex. Talking, that's real sex. That's real sex. That is them having real sex. That is a real guy attempting to suck his own dick. Yep. I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> now you do. Now you know. You might want to go check it out. And see, it out. Owen agrees with me. Yes. Oh, yes. Porn can be educational. Right. So. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. I have never disagreed that porn cannot be, can be educational. I think As we the are porn connoisseur, on- yes, yes, we understand. Good. Even a, a shitty topic. porn could be educational. What, what not, not to do? <laughs> yes, like, like, Jinx. like, don't fuck in front of somebody while they're eating a salad. Really? Right in front of my salad? Anyway, <laughs> by the way, I never, I've never found that as funny as as a lot of people have, have thought. Yes, I know. It's so. I stupid. never thought it was. That's a, why I think it's funny. Yeah, I it, maybe it's just not my type of comedy. It's so unrealistic. Like, like, okay, one of two things has to be happening. She either is the most blind and deaf act like individual in a real world scenario, like oblivious to the world around her. Or like, I, I mean, there's no other excuse. It's like, how could you not tell that they were both naked with just aprons on? And well, one of them was naked with an apron on. One of them was top, was bottomless. Okay, so apparently one of us has actually watched the scene. Not was the yes. bottom? <laughs> no, the bottom wasn't. Okay, so the bo- okay, 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did. I mean, the I'm the going, bottom was, was naked. Before. He just had an apron on. No, 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 no. David's gonna break it down. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not gonna break it down. I'm gonna. Mo- we're gonna move on because this is totally <laughs> against the topic, and we have plans to talk about this at another time. So. I am squashing the conversation. All right. There is no need to explain explain the joke. I just don't find it funny. Is all right. We'll talk Anyways, about it. Trans Bear, our listener, thank you for writing in. <sighs> and um, I hope you don't mind our uh, tangents. Uh, yeah, apologies about all the the left and right turn it alpha monkey <laughs> bullshit that I probably mm-hmm. welcome to Cubs Out Loud, <laughs> but. Uh yeah, there's the that's a thing, and um uh, yeah. Speaking of the thing, guess what? Else, guess what? Uh, a, a, that's the end. Hey, there's plenty of ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. You can shoot us an email just like Mr. Transbear did at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 we'll talk That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, right here on YouTube, at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, you can f- also join our social chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're recording these, maybe, uh, by subscribing to our uh, Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can buy uh, merchandise such as a first generation Cubs Out Loud shirt. Or, Damien, what's that shirt that you're wearing? You are muted. I'm muted. Anyway, I am muted. I am actually wearing the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race shirt because it was the first one I grabbed out of my um, um, your, your drawer. Your <laughs> clean, clean laundry. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was the first one out of my drawer. Uh, but it's the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. It's got the little crown, but it's the logo, the most recent logo, and it also has a honey mustard stain on it. But we're not going to talk about that. Ding. Uh, and many other different pieces of merchandise. Speaking of which, there is a piece of merchandise that should be coming up on the store sometime soon. If that gets resolved, I haven't heard anything new about it. But uh, uh, keep watch. We will let you know in the show, show of course. Um, and where was I? Uh, you can also become a patron. Uh, our patrons are so 
so great to have you, especially during every two years when we have a really large cost come up um, at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us as Google Play Podcast, and find us on Spotify. Uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet. It says box at box, probably box, got box, something or other. You can find me as Theater Cubs 79 on most bear related sites or even on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. That's G A R B E A R 73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Happy Pie. Have a good one. And I used the wrong music. Nothing like using the intro Ooh. music to play during the outro. <laughs> it's okay. Just means the, out- the outro was just 30 seconds shorter. Uh, okay. Gets a thought- shorter grid to the after show. Oh, gosh. Okay. Speaking of after show, pardon me. And off he runs to the, the body. Well, I mean, we've got urinals right here. It's just convenient. That's true. On a on a completely unrelated note, uh, yesterday they started filming season five of Skeleton Crew. Oh, Good so Mr. Joshua Pangborn has been busy with that, and I believe Nikia may be involved in the next season as well. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So I was like, check that out now. Um, oh, and I think they're on T Public now. Are they? I think so. I it, trying to doesn't T Public it. like do kind of like isn't that like a promotional thing? Like everybody it's, puts uh, in a P, uh, pre-orders or something. Uh, no, I could be well, thinking of the wrong thing. I, I mean, I haven't is. watched the show since like halfway through season one, so. Uh, let me see. Sidekick Productions. I think it's kind of like Zazzle in that they have a store. Uh, mm-hmm. There's Team Anthony shirts, Vintage Hunter, Team Hunter shirts, Sidekick Productions, Skeleton Crew, Money Shots. Oh, they even did like a cute, like a uh, pride lettering thing. If hoodies and shirts and stuff. They took, they, they took our suggestion and ran with it. What now? Uh, I was just saying that on Friday or Saturday was the first day of filming for season five of uh, Skeleton Crew. Oh. I also know that they've won a couple of awards since then. And the thing I was just talking about is that they now have a tea public store where they are selling shirts and hoodies. Oh. Uh, they are an official selection of the 2019 Seoul Korea Web Fest. Mm, nice. So, um, in May, they made their first European appearance thanks to the incredible Apulia Web Fest. I'm not quite sure what language it is. So, yeah, I'm happy to hear that they're doing well. Yeah. So yeah, always a good thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So kind of neat that um, big McKay. So yeah. Anyways, it was just kind of a it was a that was a real non sequitur, <laughs> to say the least. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, that comes out loud for you. We're just full of non sequiturs. Something of that sort. Uh, oh, uh, da, 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 I forget what else I was going to say. Damn it. It's okay. This getting old shit is like really. <laughs> Girl, you have no idea. I'm going to stop streaming.